Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, hey everybody, so sorry that I couldn't be there in person today. Uh, that was originally the plan. Uh, and I'm really hoping I'll catch you at one of these upcoming uh, CryptoEcon days. They sound like a lot of fun. And the, all the conversation the topics that I've listened to today has been really interesting for me. Uh, so hopefully you're all having a blast, enjoying your trip to Austin, uh, and have a productive rest of your day. I want to talk to you primarily about Filecoin Plus. Um, and so we'll spend some time going over what Filecoin Plus actually is, the system, how it works, what the mechanics are, uh, and then chat a little bit about its place in the Filecoin state, like in terms of Falcon as a network, uh, the economics of Falcon of participating in the uh, of market, um, and then chat a little bit about our upcoming plans and how you can get involved. I'll try to keep it to 15 minutes, uh, so I'll probably take questions at the end, uh, but if there's anything burning, somebody from the room, stop me. Cool, with that, let's talk about what Falcon Plus actually is. Uh, so our little headline quote is effectively that Falcon Plus adds a layer of social trust to the Filecoin network to incentivize useful storage. So what does that actually mean, right? So Filecoin today serves as a marketplace for people that have demand uh, to use storage services and people that have supply to serve those people's demands. Uh, and the idea behind Filecoin Plus is that in an environment where the there's no actual like algorithmic, algorithmic way to identify whether or not storage itself is useful or whether or not the, the services that are being given to clients or data owners are born of legitimate need, Filecoin Plus was introduced as a social trust layer effectively to build a mechanism where we could ensure that the Falcon ecosystem itself is being adopted and used in the best way possible and that Falcon's mission uh, to be the store for humanity's information is actually met. Uh, and so the idea is that we introduce a mechanism that provides uh, some amount of leverage to clients where they effectively go through a KYC process uh, or a trust building or verification process um, to be rewarded with the with the resources and leverage within the network to have favorable deal terms and deal making in the adoption of Falcon as a technology, uh, but then also ensuring that over time they're uh, they have leverage in shaping how the Falcon economy is actually built, how the services in the network are built, uh, in an effort to build the most useful. Uh, storage services possible. How does this actually work? Uh, let's talk about it. So the, the core Filecoin Plus mechanism is based on this resource called DataCap, and I'll, I'll jump into that in a second. Uh, but as you can see here on the right, we've got a, a set of different stakeholders. We've got the governance community, we've got something called rookie holders, we've got notaries, and then we've got clients or data owners, uh, as well as storage providers. Uh, and the idea is that each of these stakeholders interact through the use of DataCap. And so I'm going to say a couple of things right now, and some of you that are not familiar with the system uh, may be confused by them, and we'll, we'll, we'll dive into each of these spots and touch back on them towards the end, so hopefully it will start to make sense. Uh, but the idea, the core, the core idea is effectively that we have, this, we have this stakeholder role called notaries that allocate data cap to data owners and clients who spend that data cap in making deals for their data to be stored on the Filecoin network via storage providers. And storage providers receive a network subsidy to take those deals on. Uh, and the mechanism for that network su subsidy is via something that we call quality adjusted power. Uh, so you probably heard the damp power at this point. Uh, it's the you know, relative supply that you're adding to the network. Um, and the idea with quality adjustment is effectively that when you're serving the data of a client that is coming with data cap, you get a 10x multiplier uh, to that power. So you receive a 10x quality adjustment. Uh, so a 32 uh, Gibibit deal has raw power of 32 Gibibytes, but uh, with data cap, that would be 320. Uh, and so that in return effectively acts as a multiple uh, in the likelihood of a storage provider winning block rewards over time. And so it becomes a network back subsidy effectively for these storage providers to, to work with these clients and data owners to store their data uh, on chain. So let's talk about what data cap actually is. It's a, it's a novel, infinitely generated, infinite supply resource within the Filecoin network. Um, clients and data owners use data cap to make these storage deals as we talked about. It is a one-time use credit, which means that as you use it, it's consumed or it gets burnt, whatever term you want to use. Uh, but the idea is that like it's a balance effectively on each uh, address on the network that decreases as it's used. Uh, and then storage providers that receive deals for which data cap was used uh, those deals are marked on chain as verified deals uh, and verified deals receive a 10x quality adjustment. And I know we've got a bunch of tokenomics and crypto econ nodes in the room. And so what that also means is effectively 
for that to satisfy the, the crypto, crypto economic design of the Falcon network. Uh, these deals also have 10 times the collateral, uh, but also result in 10 times the odds of block rewards for those structure providers. So how do these stakeholders actually come together for this Falcon Plus uh, system to work? Uh, so first up, we've got root key holders. Root key holders are sort of our executors of decisions on chain. Like these decisions are often made by way of community governance through conversation, consensus, voting, et cetera, that happens through our community governance mechanisms, but to actually help execute decisions on chain, i.e. a great example is uh, a new notary is elected and we'll, we'll hear about what that means in a second. Uh, but the root key holders are the ones that sort of based on the audit trail of a decision can just objectively push a decision onto the chain. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to speed through a little bit uh, this section, but if you have any questions on this, we can chat about them at the end or you can reach out to me. Uh, you have notaries. Notaries are arguably the, the core uh, fiduciaries of the Falcon network, a, a net new role that's introduced through the Falcon Plus program. Uh, and their goal is very simple. It's that you establish trust with data owners that are coming to Falcon. Uh, and that in establishment of that trust, uh, you are giving data cap that is commensurate with that level of trust. And so if it's a, if it's a project that is open data, that's publicly accessible, it's a well-known, well-reputed organization uh, that is renowned internationally, then it's easy to establish trust as long as you can identify that the person coming to you from that organization actually does work for that organization. But you know, if you've got to jump through hoops, go through NDAs, try to unlock and understand who the client actually is and why they want to use Falcoin, then it's harder to do that. And, and notaries introduce that sort of soft skills, social element where you can actually build a human to human or a person to person relationship that then results in an on-chain economic incentive. So notaries are currently selected through an election process that is uh, run via the governance team, but also primarily to the existence of a rubric, uh, which is community owned. Uh, and so we all sort of make proposals to make changes to the rubric over time. Uh, and then the process of notary selection is by way of an application that is scored based on that rubric. Uh, and then people are elected based on how high the score. Uh, and the idea is that we have geographic distribution of these notaries. Uh, so we've got notaries in uh, all the continents where there's Falcon presence uh, with lots of different countries represented, lots of languages, cultures, and then also backgrounds, uh, whether that's academic or, uh, by vocation, uh, the idea that people understand business needs or understand how client needs may evolve based on the use cases that they're trying to unlock uh, is super important. And so specializing in different types of uh, industries like media or something might be useful for a notary when I'm trying to identify the legitimacy or build trust with data owners that are coming in from said industry. And then you've got, of course, the core of the market. We've got clients and structure providers. Uh, clients being the demand side of the marketplace, the data owners, uh, their aim is to, to be and establish that they are trustworthy in the system. Uh, and then you've got storage providers on the other side, the supply side of the marketplace. Uh, and what they want to do is provide storage services to these clients uh, and earn for it, whether that's through block rewards or through the actual uh, transaction of Filecoin in offering of these services. And then last and absolutely not least, in our system, we've got the Filecoin Plus governance community, uh, which includes all of these other categories of people we've talked about, uh, as well as just in general, uh, members of the community that are interested in shaping this program, uh, as well as ensuring that Filecoin itself is living up to being the data for a data store for humanity's most valuable information. And this now includes you. Gotcha. Um, and so as a quick recap, notaries perform due diligence or KYC processes on data owners to verify them. Uh, and the process of verification is, is similar to establishing trust or can be interpreted that way. Um, and the goal is to identify real data owners that actually have valid data. Uh, notaries then send data cap to these data owners addresses on chain. Uh, and then these data owners or these clients are able to burn that data cap to make deals with providers on chain. Uh, and so as providers make these verified deals, they get a quality adjustment to their power on chain, uh, which results in more block rewards over time, and so better ROI for them. Hopefully that's starting to make sense. Uh, let's chat about what that actually means in terms of where Filecoin's at today uh, and the overall economics of the, of the network. Hey, Deep, real, real quick time yes. check. We got about five minutes left. Thank you. Cool. So data cap right now uh, accounts, uh, is it, we, we've got a couple of dashboards you can check out. I can share links. But roughly, you know, we've invented or pulled out about 560 petabytes of data cap in the network. 
about 140 of that has been made available in addresses owned by clients or data owners. And a 98.5, so very, very close to hitting this major milestone of 100 petabytes of data cap being sealed to deals, um, is, has actually been locked into sectors and, and deals have been made. And so that's just under one exabyte of quality adjusted power. Uh, if you look at the network, uh, that still represents a small percentage. We've got a long way to go, lots of work to do to get there, and a really exciting opportunity to continue unlocking the usefulness of Falcon over time. Uh, in terms of our program, we're in the process of wrapping up our third round of notary elections. We'll have between 55 and 60 active notaries that are distributed globally after this. Uh, we're working on mechanisms to increase their activity, uh, enablement, reduce how long it takes for them to react and work with clients to get them data cap. Uh, and right now, just as a call out, about 23% of applications for data cap actually end up receiving it. Uh, there's definitely some learnings and takeaways there. In terms of the network state, this is a super powerful uh, graph. Uh, what you can see in green is actually the, the presence of Falcon Plus when it comes to the amount of data that's in deals on chain uh, active today. And so you can see just, you know, the, the proportion has just grown astronomically over the last year. This is one year to, da uh, to date, basically. Uh, and Falcon Plus right now effectively represents 90% of all the deals. So it's a very important sort of entry point for legitimate deal making on the network. Uh, and we're currently seeing throughput rates of about one penny by the day. In terms of the overall network state, if you look at committed capacity or power in the network or supply provided to the network, so this includes both what could be uh, in deals versus what's not, you can again see that the presence of Falcon Plus is, has grown substantively and it's been very important in shaping the stability of the network, ensuring that the network continues to be useful uh, and deliver value to humanity. Currently, it's still definitely optimized for more public open data sets, uh, data sets that can be geograph geographically distributed because it's easier to validate that that data is actually being stored in deals with storage providers that are in different locations and definitely more optimized for long-term storage. Um, we're working towards better supporting enterprise needs, uh, private data needs, uh, data that needs to be retrieved more frequently and, and, and so, some of the stuff Patrick talked about, you heard, uh, but there's definitely challenges in the economy for retrievals themselves. And so uh, we're part of that conversation. We're excited to see how that shapes out and might influence the way in which people will use this network in the future. Uh, in the current economic state, uh, Phil Plus is very important because it effectively results in significantly better ROI for search providers or people participating in the network. Uh, collateral is currently relatively cheap, hardware is still available. Uh, the main thing here is actually on the customer acquisition front. Uh, so doing the business development, ensuring that data owners that are interested in participating in Filecoin actually have a path to getting there. Uh, and there's an on-ramp to getting onto Filecoin that includes, of course, the Filecoin Plus path of verification, uh, reduction in sort of the liability being taken on by a storage provider once you have better knowledge of who the client actually is. Uh, but then also, in general, just like understanding and being educated as a data owner, how you can leverage the services of the network uh, is super important. So we're really excited to continue enabling the market and sort of lubricating this market and ensuring that Filecoin delivers useful value. Uh, in terms of program areas of focus today, we want to enable ideally up to five petabytes of verified deals a day. And like this number has a lot of nuance and complexity to it. We're currently hovering around one, but the idea is that we do this both through program design and uh, evolving, uh, evolving the actual mechanisms of how the community works together and in what way data cap actually gets to clients, but then also doing it in a safe way. Uh, and so there's a lot of complexity behind that. Um, our core goals uh, can be broken down into these three sort of categories. First, we want to reduce uh, one of our key metrics that we call TTD or time to data cap, where we want to increase both the availability, but also the attainability of data cap uh, and the speed in which it gets allocated. We want to err on the side of trusting people and then watching behavior on chain uh, to ensure that trust that is earned is continued to be uh, uh, to be followed through on, I guess. Um, we want to bring on more notaries. We want to improve that onboarding flow, as we, we talked about briefly before. Uh, second, uh, focus on trust and transparency, uh, making sure that the data that we have in the Falcon Plus system to the people that participate in the system is more transparent and accessible. Uh, and like I said before, like working towards like watching behavior on chain as a source of data on like the trustworthiness of different entities and the interaction between different actors that exist in our system. And then in general, working towards evolving the notary role uh, to be more in, in line with how the network has evolved, uh, how the Falcon Plus system can evolve and how we can make sort of the best impact possible in enabling the usefulness of this network in the long term. So how can you get involved? Uh, with Falcon Plus channel, which is public and Falcon Slack, please come join us. 
Uh, every two weeks, we do governance calls, and our governance calls happen in two slots. So we do a morning and an afternoon, uh, and for some of you, that might mean late night and even later at night. Uh, but the idea is that we capture people uh, in different time zones and they're able to participate in the conversation regardless of where they're based. Uh, a lot of this is available in, in Slack, but also in GitHub where we track a lot of our work. Uh, so please come join us for an upcoming governance, uh, governance call. We'd also love to have you involved in some of the incentive design and long-term system design that we're thinking about with regards to Falcon Plus, uh, how like data cap will continue to go out, what the evolution of these different stakeholder roles may look like, how they interact with each other on chain, uh, and then in general, like how can we leverage the data that we have to make Falcon more useful? Uh, in addition to you know just participating as an active community member, quick plug: we're definitely hiring both on the protocol labs as well as the Falcon Foundation side. If you're interested, please get in touch with me. Even if you're not interested, feel free to get in touch with me anytime. Uh, you can find me as Deep Kapoor on Falcon Slack or reach out to me at Deep K Kapoor on Twitter. Uh, available to answer any questions, chat, or uh, just you know uh, discuss ways in which we can build a better future together. So thanks so much for listening. Really excited to be here. Thanks for giving me the time. Uh, and hopefully you're all having a productive day and this is a continue to be a good use of your time. Cool. Thanks, Deep. All right. D Deep, I'll ask you one, one qu quick question. Um, sure. if, if it moves towards everyone becoming, if every deal, every new deal, starts to become Filecoin Plus, is that the equivalent of great inflation? And do, like, do we want a distribution of like some Filecoin Plus and some not to maintain a, you know, there's a gradient pushing people yeah. towards quality? That's a great question. Um, so I think in a way I, I can see why that would be beneficial, but I actually don't think it's a bad thing if we move towards great inflation and 100% of the deals are Filecoin Plus deals. And the reason for that, there's a few reasons for it. I think firstly, Data cap itself is not a constrained resource, right? Like, so in essence, it doesn't have its own economy. It doesn't have its own supply constraint uh, and it doesn't need to be bought or sold. It is obtained by showing trust. Uh, and so you can create an opportunity for people to effectively obtain it by trading some amount of information about themselves, the KYC about themselves. And the moment you realize that, it also then means we'll probably never reach a state where 100% of deals will be data cap because there will always be actors on the network that would rather operate in complete anonymity uh, and leverage the services without going through that verification process because it just doesn't make sense to them or their use case or they're not comfortable with doing that. Um, and so even if that were to happen, the thing that Falcon Plus does is one, on one hand, it gives leverage to a, uh, somebody that has demand to say, hey, like, I want to store my data a storage writer would much rather store my data than not store it. So just, you know, offer empty capacity or, or work with an unverified client. And so in that way, the quality of service that's offered to me will continue to increase over time. So storage providers will theoretically invest more in building better, better services because that is the way in which they can capture the best ROI for their investment is, is serving the people that are uh, 5 plus deals. Second, it also offsets liability for a storage provider. So when a client comes in, in a P2P anonymous distributed environment, they just look like an address on chain, right? So you get like a, here's an address, here's a CID, maybe the information's encrypted. You actually don't know what you're storing. But when somebody comes through Falcon Plus, you have a public auditable track record of who they actually are, what they're hoping to do in the network, what they're hoping to achieve, what their data looks like, what the shape of it might be, what their long-term plans are. Uh, and so it reduces the risk and the liability on behalf of the search provider as well, who can then take a dependency on their expectations, their long-term services that they have to offer and reduce the likelihood that, you know, they might be storing something illegal because they actually have an understanding of who this client is and they can offer their services uh, to them over a longer period of time. So regardless of whether or not data cap itself becomes less valuable and less lucrative, uh, which it will, as you're calling out, uh, but that will happen anyway, because block rewards over time will go down. So the, the thing that I do see happening is that today, when deals are made with data cap, those deals are often free. So uh, data owners or clients often end up paying nothing, just offering like data cap for their deals. I do expect that over time that will change. Like these deals will start to cost money because storage providers have business models that require income. Uh, and in general, the Falcon network was designed for their income to shift from just being block reward oriented to being deal income based oriented over time. But I don't actually see a reason for data cap itself not to be desirable for both sides of the marketplace. Great. That, that makes sense. Thank you.